In this video, let's learn about properties of uh, integers. Um, whatever properties we'll discuss here uh, will be restricted to addition and subtraction and not to multiplication and division. So the first property is that we want to discuss is the closure property and the addition. Now, if you remember that whenever we add two whole number, whole numbers, if we suppose we have two whole numbers a and b, and if we add it, then we'll get suppose we get number c. Okay, so this number c was will also be whole number in case of whole numbers, right? This number will also be whole number c. If the same condition is true for integers. That is, if we have an integer one, uh, the num uh, one integer is a, the second integer is b, okay? And if we add these two integers, if we add a plus b, and if we get the number c, is this number c also an integer? If it is an integer, then we'll, we'll say that uh, the addition of integers is closed, that is, it's closed under addition. So let's take an, let's take some integers. Like let's suppose you have a is equal to minus one, and you have b is equal to minus three. Or let's say yeah, suppose it's minus three. Okay. And this is a is equal to three, and b is equal to ten. Okay. So two negative integers and two Possible integers. So we'll see for we'll check for both these two uh, conditions. Now for the first one, that is uh, a is equal to minus one, b is equal to minus three. If we add these two numbers, that is minus one and plus minus three, what will we get? We'll get minus four, right? So minus one plus minus three is equal to minus four. So is minus four an integer? Yes, of course, minus four is an integer. Right? So, here we get an integer. This is integer. Well, let's see for this, check for this, the positive integer. So, you have 3 and plus 10. We'll get 13. We'll get 13. Is 13 an integer? Yes, 13 is an integer. 13 is an integer. So here you got a negative integer, and here you have a positive integers, integer. Therefore, we'll see that we'll we'll say that that addition of integers is closed. Okay, it is closed under addition. It follows the uh, the closure property. Okay. What about subtraction? What about subtraction? The closure under subtraction is the subtraction of two integers is closed. That, um, does that follow the closure property? Like, if we add two whole, if we subtract two whole numbers, then we'll get the whole number. And since we are getting the whole number, therefore we'll say that the uh, subtraction of whole numbers is closed. That is, it follows the closure property. What about integers? So again, let's take example. Like, a is equal to minus one, and b is equal to minus three. Check for this. So, if a minus b that is uh, integer 1 minus integer 2 gives a uh, c that is also an integer then we'll say that the subtraction is closed okay so here you have a is equal to minus 1 and b is equal to minus 3 so minus 1 minus minus 3 what you'll get you'll get minus 1 this minus and this minus will make it here it will come this and 3 you'll get 2 now 2 is an integer. It's an integer. Let's take two positive integers and then subtract. Let's say a is equal to 10 and b is equal to 7. Now 10 minus 7 will be 3. And 3 is an integer. Therefore, in the case of subtraction of integers, integers, it's, it follows the closure property. We'll say we'll say that the subtraction of integers is closed. Okay, since we are getting an integer after addition and subtraction, therefore both addition and subtraction are closed. Uh, they follow the closure property. Okay. 
Now, the next property that we want to discuss is the commutative property for addition. Commutative property for addition. What does that mean? So, suppose you have uh, uh, you have integer a and you have integer b. Okay, if you add these two integers and whatever value you get here, and if you add reverse their position, like if you do b plus a, that you have shifted it here, and you have shifted this here. Okay. So if you do b plus a, and whatever answer you get, suppose here you got uh, some, some in, a number, here you got some in, number or integer, if these two values, that is if a plus b, is equal to b plus a if this condition is satisfied then we'll say that the addition of integers is commutative okay if this condition is satisfied we'll say that the addition of integers is commutative it follows the commutative property so for that let's say you have a is equal to 10 b is equal to 3 so if a is equal to 10 and b is equal to 3, if you add it, that is if you do for a plus b, you'll get 10 plus 3 and you'll get 13. If you will do for b plus a, you'll get 3 plus 10 and again you'll get 30. So these two values are same, right? You're getting the same number. That is for a plus b and for b plus a, you have same numbers. Right? We are saying numbers. Therefore, we'll say that it follows the commutative property. That is, the addition of integers follows the commutative property. It always follow the, follows the commutative property. Why? Because a plus b is equal to b plus a. We are getting the same integer in both these two cases. What about the commutative property for subtraction? Does it hold true for subtraction also? Let's see that. If if you have two integers a and b and if a minus b will be equal to b minus a then just like in the case of addition we'll say that the subtraction of integers follow the follows the commutative property uh, follows the commutative property so let's see like if you have a is equal to 10 and then you have b is equal to 7 suppose right so if you do a minus b if you perform a minus b you'll get 10 minus 7 and you'll get 3 now what for b minus a if you do b minus a if you perform b minus a then it is 7 minus 10 what will you get here you'll get minus 3 you'll get minus 3 and if you watch it, if you take here it is 3 and here it is minus 3, these two numbers, these two integers are not equal. Okay, 3 is not equal to minus 3. Right? So here we'll say that, let's take one more one more example. Let, here you took only positive integers, let's take some. Uh, assume that we have some negative integers. So if a is equal to say uh, minus 10 and b is equal to minus 4. Now let's see for this. What will be a minus b? a minus b will be minus 10 and minus minus 4. This will be minus 10 plus 4. This will give you minus 6. A minus B in this case is minus 10 minus minus 4 will give you minus 6. And what about B minus A? What about B minus A? This will be minus 4 minus minus 10 and it will be minus 4 plus 10 and this will give you 6. Right? Again, these two numbers, these two integers are not, are not equal because minus 6 Will not be equal to 6. Okay, so just like here that uh, when we got 3 and minus 3 
here we have 6 and minus 6. These two integers are not, not equal. Therefore, in the case of addition, we could say that we can say that the addition of integers follow the commutative property, but that is not the case here in uh, subtraction. That is, if you have a minus b, then that will not be equal to b minus a. That will not be equal to b minus a. Therefore, we'll say that uh, the subtraction of integers does not follow the commutative property. Now let's move to the next one and that is associative property for addition. Now if you have three integers, suppose you have three integers that is a, b and c and it is a plus b plus c and this is within brackets. Now if this a plus bracket b plus c is equal to a plus b within brackets and plus c. If this condition gets satisfied, then we'll say that the addition of integers follow the associative property. The addition of integers follow, follows the associative property. Okay, so let's assume that we have a is equal to 10, we have b is b equals to 3 and c is equal to 8. Now, if you do for this a plus b plus c, you will get 10 plus in brackets, this is 3 plus 8, bracket closed, and you'll get you'll get 10 plus 3 plus 8, and this is 30, this you'll get 21. What about this one? So if you apply here, you have uh, 10 plus 3 in brackets plus 8 and you have 13 plus 8 and you got 21. Okay. So of course we have this is 21 and we have here we have 21. Okay. So these two integers are exactly equal. right? So we will say that a plus within brackets b plus c is equal to a plus b within brackets and plus c. This condition gets satisfied. So we can say that in case of addition of integers, it follows the associative property. The addition of integers follows the associative property. What about subtraction? Does subtraction of integers follows the associative property? So for that, it has to satisfy the condition. It has to satisfy the condition that is a minus brackets b minus c back close is equal to a minus b within bracket and minus c. If this condition gets satisfied, if this condition gets satisfied, then we'll say that we can say that the subtraction of integers follows the associative property. So let's assume that you have uh, a is equal to 4, b is equal to 3, and c is equal to whatever, say 6. So for the first one, for the first one, that is this one. You have a as 4 and you have minus, then you have 3 and then you have minus 6. What you'll get here? You'll get 4, okay, minus. If you perform 3 minus 6, you'll get minus 3, right? And here you have 4 plus 3, because minus and minus, in back it is minus, you'll get plus sign here and this will be 7. Right. What about this one? So you have 4 minus 3 in brackets and minus 6. You have 3 minus 6 and therefore you'll get, you'll get minus 3. Sorry, this is, this is, this is 4 minus 3 is 1 and here you have minus 6 and therefore you'll get you'll get minus 5 okay so here you have number 7 okay if you perform a minus b a minus within brackets b minus c you'll get this one as 7 and if you solve a minus b within brackets and then minus c you have 4 minus 3 then minus 6 this will be 1 minus 6 this will give you minus 5 these two integers are not equal 
therefore we'll say that we can say that this condition is not satisfied here and therefore we can say that the subtraction of integers does not follow associative property in the case of addition it was following the associative property but here the uh, subtraction does not follow the associative property and then we have the last one we have the last one that is the additive identity if you have if you have any number if you have any number that when added to any integer gives gives back the same integer listen again if you have any number if you have any number which when added to any integer any integer whether whether positive integer or negative integer if it gives back the same integer then that will be the additive identity of that of integer of all the integers suppose you have integer a and if you if you have a number b which when added to a then if it returns a that the resultant is a only then you will say that that number b is the additive identity so think about that what can be a number which when added to any integer give back the same integer and the very first thing that will pop in your mind will be zero right if you add zero if you add zero to any integer it will give back the same integer and therefore and therefore we'll, we can say that zero zero is the additive identity is the additive identity of integers it's true for any integer you if you add zero to any integer you'll get back the same integer 